Hey what's up guys, back again with another video. This time I'm going to show you how to install Python and also how to install PyCharm, okay? I go hard even when I'm depressed yeah. Everybody out here got stress yeah. Yeah. I guess like success yeah. Take drugs till my eyes turn red yeah. Don't feel it so the first thing you want to do is go to python.org so that's easy enough so come here and then the first thing you want to do is hover over the downloads uh, button on the menu and then just click by, uh, python 3 point whatever um, so just click that and it's going to download that for you and so once this is done downloading we can open it so now it's going to automatically open for me since I clicked it so yeah this is simply going to allow us to install python onto our machine so we can use python right because that's what we need obviously if we're going to be coding in python so the first thing you want to do is very important. You want to click Add, Py uh, add Python 3.7 to Path. So that's going to add to your path on your system so that you don't have to do it yourself, okay? That's very important. And so the next thing you want to do is just click Install. So click Yes, of course, if you have to. And now that's going to do all that for you. It's going to install everything, and I'll be right back when it's done. Actually, in the meantime, let's go to uh, jetbrains.com slash pycharm. Um, PyCharm is basically a really good IDE integrated development environment for developing uh, Python applications, okay? Python code. So it's very nice, it's very sexy, that's why I like it. It's very good looking and it's very well developed. I just love uh, JetBrains and they're basically just a company that um, gives you a bunch of IDEs like IntelliJ IDEA. That's a very popular one for using, uh, for creating Java programs, that's what I use. And so yeah, PyCharm is a really good one for Python, so we're going to download this one, okay? So we can scroll down here. And we can see that there's a professional version and there's a, a community edition, okay? And so the professional version, uh, the professional version is going to cost money, which if you want to pay money, that's fine. Or you can do a free trial, that's also fine. Um, but you also have a community edition, which is going to be perfect for what we're doing, some basic programming, because we're not going to start off with anything, you know, advanced. So it's pretty much fine for what we're going to be doing. So if you want to download community edition, go for it. It's really good. So I already have a, you know, a premium uh, license for all of the IDEs for um, JetBrains so I can get the professional version. So I'm going to download that real quick. So I'll just click download and it's going to download it for me. And once this thing pops up, I'll be right back. Okay, so our Python actually finished before our PyCharm um, installation uh, was opened. So we can go ahead and close this. We just click close and now basically Python has been installed, okay? So if you want to test it out, make sure it was installed successfully. You can go to, uh, you know, the search thing down here and then type in PowerShell. Or you can open up any console that you have. But I'm going to use PowerShell because all of you should have PowerShell if you have Windows. And so you want to type Python. Just type uh, Python and then just press enter. And then now if you see something like this, that means it works correctly. It should say Python and then the version, all right? So that means I have successfully installed Python 3.7.2, which is indeed the latest version. So we did everything correctly, okay? So we can close this by doing quit, just like this. And then now we can close the window, okay? So that's how you do that. All right, so PyCharm is done downloading. So now let's go ahead and finish the installation of it. So let's go ahead and click Next. Then we can go ahead and choose where we want to install PyCharm. I'm going to just store it for the default location. You could store it whatever you want to, okay? Just go ahead and click Browse and then, you know, choose where you want to store it. But, yeah, so click Next when you're done with that. And then now you can choose if you want a um, 32-bit launcher, 64-bit launcher, or both. I'm going to choose 64-bit since I have a 64-bit operating system. And then um, you could add launcher to path. I'm not sure if you need to do that. I'm not going to do it because it says you need to restart, so that sounds like a lot of work I don't want to do. So I'm not going to do that. So create associations. That's basically going to make it so that whenever you have a .py file, it's going to automatically know to open it with PyCharm. So I'm going to go ahead and check that mark, uh, check mark that so I know, or so that it will do that for us. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then now we have open folder as project. So that's whenever you can right click inside of a folder and then you could open it as a PyCharm project for you automatically. It's pretty cool. So um, yeah, so download and install JRE by JetBrains. Um, I'm not sure. We don't. I don't think we need that. So I think we're good to go. So we can click next and then click install. And now it's going to install. Okay. So it's going to take a couple of minutes maybe. So just wait for it to be done. And I'll be right back. All right. So that's done. So we can go ahead and click run PyCharm and now click finish. And now the next thing we need to do is set it up so we can begin uh, developing. So yeah, let's give that a second to start up and I'll be right back. Oh wait, it's already done. So now you might see something like this. I already um, had a previous version of PyCharm installed. So what I'm going to do here is just click do not import settings. That's probably something similar to what you have as an option. You may have this also, depends. But yeah, it doesn't really matter, okay? That's just for settings and stuff like that. So now you can pretty much just choose what um, UI theme you want. You want either this ugly light one or this ugly dark one, okay? 
Uh, I'm going to choose the dark one for now because I like it dark. I don't know why, but I do. And uh, so now we have these four little um, plugins here from the marketplace that it recommends for you. I'm not really interested right now in any of these, so I'm going to just click start using PyCharm and skip that part. So now that's going to start up, and as you can see here, we have this sexy splash screen here, so it looks very nice. And that's the PyCharm uh, loading screen, okay? So we'll give that, give that a second. All right, so you should see something like this where you can create a new project or open one, and you can also configure some options down here, okay? So before we create a first project just to test it out, we're gonna actually configure an option here. So what we need to do is set up the interpreter for our, our Python. So this will be the thing that enables us to use Python within our PyCharm IDE, the thing that actually um, is able to read the code and then run it for us basically, okay? So what we need to do here is go to uh, Project Interpreter. And so now we need to you know choose a new interpreter if you can click this drop down, you can see that there are no interpreters here, so we need to create our own. So what we can do here is click plus to create a new one, and then now you can choose these different options here, okay? So you have system interpreters, pipe environment, virtual environment, a bunch of random crap. So I'm going to just click system interpreter because we just downloaded the Python on our system, right? And so now I can go here and choose which Python uh, version I want to install, right? So I have different versions. You may probably only have one if it's your first time using Python. So as you can see, I have Anaconda in this little folder here, but then I have app data, local programs, Python, Python 37, 32, Python.exe. And this is probably the one I just installed, so I can go ahead and select this and then press OK. And so now it should add that for us and then click OK again. And now it's going to load everything for us. And as you can see here, it says uh, Python interpreter, Python 3.7. So that means it worked because, you know, the version we just installed was 3.7 also. So we can go ahead and click apply and now it's going to apply that for us. So this will be our, our official project interpreter for whenever we're using PyCharm, okay? So this will enable us to run Python code basically in our project, right? So now it's going to update that for us and let us do it thing, let it do its thing. And then now we can click um, create a new project or we can open up another project, right? So yeah, we're going to create a new project here, and so you can choose where you want the project to be. I don't want it to be here in the default location, so I'm going to go into my file structure here, and then find my other drive. I have my F drive here, and then I'm going to find development. I'm going, to, yeah, I'm going to find this Python folder, and then I'm going to make a new project. I'm going to delete this old first one. I don't need this one. It looks like I can't delete it. That's fine. So I'm going to select this, and then inside of that, we're going to make a new fun, a new one called. Um, we'll just call it Hello World. Oops, hello world. So this will be our first project. So that means that our project, all the files for our project are gonna be inside this folder here called hello world. Okay, so now we can choose the interpreter. By default, it's gonna use this one here, the virtual environment, which is fine in case, if you wanna use that, that's fine. But what I'm gonna do here is use the one that we just, we just set it to be, the, the one that we just set that we downloaded and installed. So we can just click in, uh, existing interpreter so we don't have to install something extra. We don't need to do all that random crap. So that's good to go, so we can click create. And then now it's going to create everything for us and load everything, so we can just give that a second. Alright, as you can see here, it's scanning the files to index and everything. It's doing a bunch of loading stuff, so we can close this. And the first thing you want to do is go ahead and open up your file structure here. There's no file in, or anything inside of here, as you can see. So what we can do here is create our first Python file, so new file, or Python file. And then now we can call it whatever we want. Let's just call it, um, we'll call it hello. So we'll just call it hello, and now it's going to create that file for us. And now we can see that we have a hello file, hello.py. So that's a Python file. Okay, so everything is done loading, by the way. Oh, never mind. Looks like it's still loading some stuff. But anyway, so what we're going to do here, just to test it out, make sure the interpreter works and everything else works, we're going to make a first, uh, our first little sample program. So we're going to do print, and then inside of the print, we'll have a little message here. We're going to say hello. So this will say hello. Um, Hopefully. So if you want to run this, we can usually just click the play button up here, but it's grayed out, so we need to add a configuration, or we can just go here, right click, and then click run hello. So this will run this for us, and now it's going to run the file, and now as you can see here in the console, it says hello, it printed out hello. So this was able to print out the word hello, so that means that our Python interpreter definitely works, as you can see here, okay? So anyway, um, that's how you do all of that. It's pretty simple, very simple actually. We just had to install Python from the website, python.org, um, install that, and that's going to serve as our um, interpreter. And stuff like that. Um, also, we have our, you know, our, you know, what's it called? Console thingy in our PowerShell. It's called a REPL. It means read, evaluate, evaluate, print loop. So a REPL. So that's what that stands for. But that's basically what a, what this is. What I'm about to show you right now. Oops, what the heck was that? I don't know what that was. But this is the Python REPL. So that's what that is in case you're wondering. Okay. So anyway, that's how you do all of that. Um, hopefully you found that very interesting. If you have any questions about what we did. You may have some questions you could ask in the comment section below or you can join our discord there's a link in the description for you in case you want to join it so make sure you do that and uh, yeah so if you like this video leave a like if you need to see more subscribe and peace